Hello. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Muy buenos dias a todos. Magandang umaga po. 500 years ago, Ferdinand Magellan claimed the 7,200 islands and islands for the Spanish uh, Empire. For four centuries, Spain ruled us, but left many legacies that were significant of each is Christianity. Spain Christianized us and made us the only Christian nation in Asia. From this religion, we learned many celebrations, but the most loved by Filipinos are the Christmas and New Year celebrations. These two occasions are well celebrated in the whole Christendom. But today, please allow me to share with you the Christmases and New Year celebrations I saw and experienced in my native Marikina compared to the Christmases and New Year's I saw and experienced in Madrid, Spain during my three years of master's studies and five years for my doctorate or a total of eight years. Let's begin with the free Christmas activities. Slide, please. In the Philippines, as early as October, we begin to hang the parole or Christmas lanterns with blinking Christmas lights. We decorate our homes with Christmas tree, a Belen set, and other Christmas decors while we hear Christmas songs on the radio. Our local gov government decorate the lamppost on main streets with Christmas lanterns. By November, the changes begin, which is like a flea market, and on December, the schools usually end the classes by a lantern parade and lantern contest. Carolings also begin while vendors selling their Christmas dainties to put them on the special building begin selling. In Spain, Christmas is also felt as early as October. Here they begin to sell Christmas dainties or sweets in supermarkets, groceries, and other food shops. If we have the putubumbong and the bebinka, there they have the torones of different kinds like toron duro, toron blando, etc. These torones are made up of almonds, honey, milk, and other ingredients. Almonds are very essential during Christmas. There is the natural almond, toasted almond, or the crushed ones. The most special torones and chocolates are those made by the Nas of Veronica de Constantine. We also have the sapan, which comes in different shapes like fish, animals, etc. And also mantecados, rosco de vino, and the special polvorones made by the Nas of St. Clair of the town of Estepa. For the Spanish families who cannot afford to buy these dainties, their parish church and the different organizations give them these items free as Christmas gift because the Spaniards want to see that everybody will have those dainties on Christmas. By late November, they begin to decorate all the streets with bulbs of different colors and Christmas lights. I saw how the Plaza de España in Madrid was filled with lots and lots of bright Christmas bulbs as if it was daylight and on the entire on, on the entire plaza. They don't have Christmas lanterns like we do. Uh, at, at the Plaza Mayor also, they hold the Tiangue, where they sell Christmas uh, Belen sets, Christmas decors, and other images of saints. In the Philippines, we see, we have here carolers and carolings. In Spain, they have choral groups holding Christmas concerts in different churches, which are open to the public and entrance is free. They don't sing famous Christmas songs in English. They only, they only sing Spanish and Latin Christmas carols. For us, the Christmas tree is the primary symbol of Christmas. There, it is only secondary. The number one symbol of Christmas is the Belen set that is exhibited everywhere aside from private homes. All the churches have the Belen set, not in the altar like here, but on the one side of the church because their set needs a big space. When I was there, I loved walking from one church to another to see those Christmas villages or Belen sets. One Christmas season, the city government put up a pres presentation of a live Belen at the Retiro Park. It was live because the couple Saints Joseph and Mary, the shepherds, the three kings, the three camels, and other animals were real people and animals. Only the baby Jesus lying in the manger was not live. It is the big image of the holy of the baby Jesus that we see in the church. The exhibit lasted only for a week and was done only for a few hours because it gets very cold in as the night advances, being winter in the Spanish capital. The official start of Christmas. In the Philippines, Christmas begins officially on December 16 with the Misa de Gallio and the Vina Mass for nine days to honor the Virgin Mary. It is additionally done due, uh, at, at 4 a.m., time of the crowing of the roosters. It was translated to Filipino as in Bangabi, meaning hearing Mass at night because 4 a.m. in the Philippines in December is still very dark at that time. But during martial law, 
Curfew was imposed from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Therefore, the Misa de Gallo cannot be done. So the church, instead of beginning at the dawn of December 16, began it on the night of December 15 after dinner and retained its names in the B. This time, the, the term became more appropriate because it's really hearing mass at night. After martial law, the Misa de Gallo was restored, but the Simbanga B continues. So now we can choose the Christmas Navina that we want to attend, uh, either the Simbanga B or the Misa de Gallo. After the Mass, the tradition was to buy the delicious Christmas dainties, the puto bumbong, and the bibinka sold by different stalls in the church patio. The Misa de Gallo ends on December 23 and on December 24, Christmas Eve, the celebration begins. We call this day Noche Buena, a Spanish term meaning good night. Uh, slide, please. Uh, but uh, this term was never translated to Filipino and instead was Filipinized by spelling the word according to the old Filipino alphabet. In the afternoon of this day, the, the people become very busy preparing the food to be eaten at night. By 7 p.m., the Marikenos begin to line up the sidewalk to wait for the passing of the Panawagan or Panuluyan in other places of the country. The Panawagan is like a reenactment of the night when the couples Joseph and Mary knocked on some houses in Bethlehem to find a place where the pregnant Mary could give birth to her child. It is a procession coming from our parish church of, of San Antonio de Padua. Like an, ordi an ordinary procession, there are two lines of people on left and, side, on left and right side holding candles. In the middle, we see a couple walking, dressed in the attire of St. Joseph and Mary. And by the end of the line, we see a float decorated and well-lighted, carrying the images of the holy couple. Following them is an orchestra. The procession passes on the different streets of the city, then it stops before some selected beautiful houses with a veranda at the second floor, and the ceremony of the Panawagan begins. A man dressed in the attire of a rich man during the time of Jesus appears in the veranda. He plays the role of the house owner. The orchestra begins to play, accompanying Joseph and Mary, while singing their supplication to the house owner to give them a place where Mary can give birth. The house owner will answer by, say, by asking, Sino ba kayo at taga saan? Who are you and from where are you? The couple will answer by saying, Kami po yung magkasisinta na si Jose at Maria, meaning their husband and wife, Joseph and Mary from Nazareth. They will repeat the request, but the owner will say, Hindi mangyaya. Ang bahay na ito ay para sa malayaman lang. Meaning, no way, this house is only for the rich. Two or more supplications and the couple will bid goodbye. Throughout the ceremony, the couple sing their lines. Only one or two times will they answer without singing. The house owner, the house owner on the other hand, says his line most of the time without singing. He sings his line only one or two times. The procession continues on their way to the next selected house and everything is repeated. By 10 p.m., the procession returns to the church for the Visa de Galileo. And this time, the house owner is with his wife and son, both dressed like rich people. As usual, the rich man will reject the couple, but the son will, and the wife will convince the own, the master, the, the head of the family, the man, to accept Joseph and Mary, and the son will lead Joseph and Mary to any path built near the altar. The couple stay there and the baby Jesus, in the form of our regular Santo Nino, will be laid in the manger. Then the big star on the top of the hat and the blinking Christmas lights will be turned on and the mass begins. After the, the mass, the people rush to their respective houses for the Noche Buena meal. At 12 midnight, like all other families, we take our Noche Buena too. We have the traditional ham and queso de bola and other meat dishes like morcon and the famous marquilla dishes called wakmato and the everlasting uh, and other special foods. In Spain, I stayed at the dormitory of the Dominican missionaries. One day in December, I asked one of the nuns about the Misa de Gallo and she said it is not done in Spain, but she saw it in Mexico when she was there for a mission. Her answer made me recall our history that Spain ruled the Philippines through Mexico due to the great distance between this archipelago and the Iberian Peninsula. The Mexicans brought it here who were then under Spain too. Christmas in Spain begins officially on December 24, Christmas Eve, just like here. On the night of December 24, is a very special night for them. They also prepare a lot of special foods for the Noche Buena. Here we prepare meat dishes. There it must be fish. The menu is usually bacalao with potatoes and cauliflower and also seafood. It won't be Christmas for them unless they have 
fish and seafoods on the table. For dessert, they have their Toronto and Masapan, and of course, champagne and other special ones. The Nashubuena meal for them is not 12 midnight like here in the Philippines. The Nashubuena for them is a family dinner taken during the regular dinner time, which is very late. 10 p.m. because during summer the sun sets there at 10 p.m. All their meals are late compared to our, our to us here. Lunch there is 2 p.m. while breakfast is 9 a.m. On the other hand, maybe during the Spanish period here, the Filipinos or the Spaniards taking their dinner too late, so they thought that the noche buena should be taken at 12 midnight. After the noche buena, they go to the church to hear the mass, then return home or stay. They don't have their dipanawagan or panuluyan. This is also unknown to them. I learned too from the Dominican sisters that this is a Mexican tradition called posadas, which means an inn or a place where travelers can rent for a brief stay. On December 25, uh, in the Philippines, uh, uh, particularly in Marikina, in the morning of December 25, we see many children walking on the street wearing their new dress, shoes, and belts. They visit their godparents and relatives to kiss their hands as a way of greeting them Merry Christmas. The godparents give rough gifts to their godchildren, while the other children are usually given money. But for my other relatives, they prefer to give suman to all their hosts and friends. They prepare suman marikina style made of glutinous rice, wrapped in banana leaves with a triangle shape and cooked in coconut milk. Lunch this day for our family is also special. Well, big families prepare lots of food, especially one whole lechon for their family reunion. The whole day of Christmas is spent by exchanging gifts and eating a lot of food. In Spain, on December 25, the people wake up late because they go to bed late. They begin to go out late in the afternoon. They don't give Christmas gifts on Christmas Day like we do. Uh, and then on New Year's Eve, December 31, in the Philippines, uh, roll please. In the Philippines, uh, New Year's Eve, December 31, we call it Media Noche. It means one half old night and one half new night. Like on Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve is also a lot of food preparation for Filipinos. Before 8 p.m., we go to the church to hear mass while well, some neighbors begin to light firecrackers. At, at 11.45 p.m., the sounds of firecrackers around us become louder and louder and louder until 10 minutes after the new year has entered after welcoming the new year we take the special mediano chino in this new millennium we have added a new year's practice this time coming from the chinese we display on the table different kinds of brown fruits like grapes etc to bring good luck for the new year in spain new year's eve is called noche vieja old night and not media noche. On noche vieja, they don't prepare a lot of food. Why? Because they go to restaurants for dinner to meet the new year and stay all night. But for the senior citizens who cannot go out anymore, they stay at home and prepare a special dinner. They usually have seafoods, roasted meat, empanada, oven roasted fish, oven cooked fish like Merlot Saraliana, and Toronis Masapanis, and of course, wines and champagne. The young ones go to the famous Puerta del Sol, the center of the city of Madrid. This plaza is surrounded by buildings and one of them a city hall with a giant clock on the top that has a very important role during New Year. One New Year's Eve, my dormants brought me to the Puerta del Sol to meet the New Year and to experience the New Year's edition called Doce Ubas. We brought with us 12 wash grapes and by 10 p.m. we were there. There was a show from the balcony of the city hall hosted by a famous actor and actress. At 12 seconds before 12 midnight, the big bell begins to toll, and for every toll, we should eat one grape until we finish all at exactly 12 midnight. After that, they shouted, Feliz Año Nuevo. They believe that you will be lucky if you were able to finish eating the 12 grapes on time. Then it is followed by a glass of champagne. This event is televised worldwide so that those who cannot come to Puerto del Sol can follow the practice. And after uh, the Dosi Ubas, the fireworks display comes from the back of the city hall. And later, the, the program continues. The people stay out to celebrate the night. They don't go home until almost sunrise, in spite of the low temperature. They do a lot of drinking and merry makings, while those at home are glued on television while taking their, champ their champagne and wines and toronis and masapanis. masapanis. 
The fireworks display we saw at the back of the city hall were the only fireworks lighted. The whole city is quiet and fireworks free. On New Year's Day in the Philippines, we usually wake up late because we went to bed late. Again, we have a special lunch like the Marikina style chicken with pineapple, uh, cosido marikeño, etc. After lunch, we take a siesta in the light afternoon, we go to other families. If they had done their Christmas reunions on Christmas Day, they go swimming or go on excursion. In Spain, on New Year's Day, the city is like a ghost town because the people are still asleep. There is complete absence of movement and life resumes only in the early evening when people begin to go out. After New Year in the Philippines, in our city and all parts of the country, the Sunday following the New Year is declared by the church as the Feast of the Three Kings. We hear a mass and then rest for the following day to work. And this way, the Christmas holidays in the Philippines end. In Spain, however, the Unitide Concision continues because they have another feast day to celebrate. This time, the Feast of the Three Kings, Melchor, Gaspar, and Baltasar on January 6. In the morning of January 5, the eve of the feast, people visit bakeries and pastries to buy their, ten, their dainty for the three kings called Roscon de Reyes. It is a bread called like snake, so the form is round. It has confectionery fruits as decoration on the center of the circle, while on the other circles they put confectionery sugar. People buy this for their family or to be given as a gift to their families. This is the time of the year when they give and, and exchange gifts. Of course, the center of the gift givings are the children who believe that they receive regalo de reyes or gift from the three kings instead of gift from the Santa Claus or Papa Noel as they call it there, like the belief of our children here. In the early evening of the same day, January 5, people, especially children, begin to, begin to line up on sidewalks of many streets in Madrid, like the Paseo de Castellana, Calle de Alcalá, Gran Vía, etc., to watch the mass awaited three kings parade, which they call Cabalgata de Reyes. It begins at Parque de Retiro and ends up the Plaza Mayor. It's a very beautiful Chris parade with, lo with flows, different lights, musical bands, military men riding in tall horses, three men dressed as three kings, like real kings in the olden days, and each riding on their well-decorated camels followed by entourage dressed like in the time of Jesus. Some men of these kings carry a wooden basket in their back full of gifts which they give away to the shouting children. It is worth lining up on the sidewalk and wait for the parade in spite of the very cold weather. I find it very beautiful, as beautiful as the parade I saw in Disneyland or even more beautiful. On January 6, the Feast of the Kings, everybody eat the, the, the Roscon de Reyes while children receive their gifts and begin playing with the toys they got. And in the afternoon, usually people go out. In this way, the holiday season in Madrid and Spain end. From Spain, we learned to celebrate Christmas and the New Year. Although we made some changes in the manner of celebration of, the, of our Christmas practices, we inherited from, because of the other Christmas practices we inherited, we inherited from others, like the Mexicans, the Americans, and the Chinese. We got the Misa de Gallo and the Posadas from, the, from Mexico, the Christmas tree and Santa Claus and carolings and Christmas carols from U.S., the lighting of firecrackers and buying grounds from, from, from China. But there is one Christmas practice I corrected in our family, that is instead of taking the Vashuguena at 12 midnight, we now take it at our regular dinner time, for our own health too. On the other hand, the present pandemic changed many of our practices and the big economic system by this calamity. But with or without pandemic, with or without economic crisis, the Filipinos, young and old, rich and poor, will surely celebrate Christmas and the New Year. Thank you, Spain, for this great legacy. Viva Filipinas, viva Spain. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias a todos.